Today on Internet Marketing Pro, we have a special guest. Her name is Cynthia Sanchez, and she's from OhSoPinteresting.com. Don't just pin it, do it. And she's going to discuss some very interesting uh, topics in regards to using Pinterest in your business. Broadcasting from the great mountaintops of Western North Carolina, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. I'm your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to our Internet Marketing Pro and eZineGenerator.com podcast show. Our shows will cover how to grow your business as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, entrepreneurism, and preeminent professional Internet marketers. Thank you for tuning into our show as we begin this adventure together exploring many great things to come. Now, let's cover a quick few announcements. Did you know that you can take this show with you wherever you go on your mobile device? Well, you can. You can subscribe to this show through YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Smart Radio, Zoom, and other syndicates in the description of this recording. If you like our show and find it resourceful, please do your social network a favor and share, like, post, leave a comment to our show. And also be sure to visit ezinegenerator.com to become a free community member to get exclusive access to thousands of quality marketing resources at your fingertips. Now, let's get down to business. And so, like I said, today's uh, guest, her name is Cynthia Sanchez. She is the uh, founder of OhSoPinteresting.com, a business that helps businesses, bloggers, and entrepreneurs use Pinterest to the fullest potential. Prior to her venture in social media, she worked as a registered radiation oncologist nurse, and with her background in the medical field, she brings a holistic approach to social media planning and strategy. Cynthia has quickly become a highly sought-after writer, podcaster, coach, and speaker, and her motto is, don't just pin it, do it. Well, today on Internet Marketing Pro, we've got Cynthia Sanchez. How are you doing, Cynthia? Thanks, Chad. I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for inviting me. So, yeah, you and I uh, actually uh, introduced ourselves at the uh, Agents of Change uh, v Digital Conference in Portland, Maine last month. And uh, what did you think of the uh, conference? Uh, I really enjoyed it. I did. I absolutely loved it. I had never been to Maine before. Um, so Maine was gorgeous. The conference was great. Um, met lots of great people there, learned a lot. So it was overall just a great trip. So today, you know, we had you on the program to uh, talk about your specialty, and that is uh, Pinterest marketing. And uh, I know that you're being featured in M uh, NMX in uh, Las Vegas uh, early January, which is the preeminent uh, social marketing and podcasting conference for the year. And, uh, you know, congratulations on that honor. So, you know, let, let's start off with the first question. And my first question would be, uh, tell us a little bit about what you got going, um, you know, on Pinterest. What drew you to Pinterest? What are the interests and what's Pinterest all about? Well, Pinterest kind of grabbed my attention the way nothing else had online before. Um, it When it first launched, I was a little hesitant to launch. Like, I really don't have time for another social network. But once I jumped on, I was in head first, and, and I haven't come up for air yet. Um, I think I'm getting in deeper now. I have the blog and the podcast and now a business based on helping other businesses grow on Pinterest. And Pinterest has evolved um, different than other social networks in that it really took off in the Midwest. Women of the Midwest were the early adopters, and that has really kind of... I guess, given a path for Pinterest to grow and to really be really female dominated. Um, and as far as the subject matter on Pinterest, you will find a majority of it there um, really feminine, I guess, in nature, weddings, recipes, you know, that type of stuff. Not that men don't enjoy cooking or aren't involved in planning weddings, but, um, you know, it is really the primary user in the United States is a woman between the ages of, you know, early to mid-20s to mid to late 40s. Um, that's the average. Um, but internationally, it's a little bit more balanced 50-50 among men and women as far as the user base. Um, it has grown faster than, I think, almost any other website in history. It reached 10 million users and you know, I think like less than a year or something crazy. And now it's up to over seventy million users. So it has, yeah, it has grown really fast. It's still not the the mammoth giant that you know Facebook is, but Facebook's been around a significant amount of time longer. And um, one thing that's really, really interesting, and I think great for businesses, 
on Pinterest is that um, the amount of referral traffic out of Pinterest. Um, and, you know, where Facebook is a little bit more designed to keep you in Facebook unless you kind of play, you know, or pay to have your ads, you know, sponsored more and, you know, that type of thing. Um, Facebook, I mean, Pinterest is all about getting you out of Pinterest. Um, each individual pin and a pin is an image. Been usually you can't upload an image straight from your hard drive, but you most of the p- images you see on Pinterest are images coming from an outside source, an outside website, um, and those images link back to that site. Each individual time that happens on Pinterest, each pin um, has about seven different ways to send people out back to that site. Um, so it's no surprise that Pinterest sends more referral traffic out of Pinterest back to the internet um, more than Google Plus, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Reddit combined. Well, that kind of sounds like uh, that cliche, uh, every picture is worth a thousand words, you know? Yeah. So, okay, you know, you've got this uh, demographic that you explained. Tell us a little bit more uh, in depth about uh, the demographic because not all social networks are necessarily meant for everybody. And let's focus and key in on that specific thing. Um, well, really enticing to the demographic, um, that would uh, require kind of a, a big assumption. And I'll go ahead and jump into that because I consider myself part of that demographic. And really, women between the 20s and, and 40s, most of us are you know busy working women, some of us with families, some of us not. But there's a lot to do. And um, we have things that we're interested in and are trying to find the answers to or solutions to or inspiration for. Um, and it's it's relaxing to browse at the picture at you know the pictures on Pinterest, and we can get a lot of information quickly. Um, each one of those pictures could be the potential answer to the problem you know we're seeking help with, whether it's what to make for dinner, what to buy, um, information about you know remodeling or where to go on my vacation or where to invest you know my next you know bonus that I'm getting at work should I invest it in you know stock tips who knows you know anything that I'm interested in um, Pinterest is about interest it's about discovery it's um, it's it's more of a search tool than it is necessarily a social network I don't have to worry about getting lost in Pinterest, learning about, you know, what's, you know, my sister is complaining about if I had a sister, I have a brother, you know, and, or, you know, he's, he's into jujitsu. So I, I would see his latest, you know, competition that he was at and then, yeah, that's great. But you know, I'm not into jujitsu, so I'm, I'm happy for him, but I'm not, you know, necessarily, Oh my gosh, I got to learn more about that. Um, and, and it's not about, you know, having those conversations back and forth, you know, of, uh, well, where are we going to meet here? What do we have for dinner? You know, or, or what's going on, you know, at the party, tomorrow night or you know it's not that type of social network pinterest is is more about just sharing interests there really isn't much discussion around it you can comment on the pins and have a little bit of discussion but that's not its primary focus there is no way to send a direct message or a private message or anything like that on there so i could go into pinterest and and it's really it sounds kind of selfish but it's all about what i want it's about what i want to see and what i want to look at what i want to learn about i can customize my pinterest feed to give me everything that i am interested in not what somebody else thinks i should be interested in well i find that really interesting and of course that's why i had you the expert on this show you know i don't really have a lot of experience in pinterest and why not get somebody on that has that background and experience is obviously getting well known and is a very credible in the in knowledge as far as the subject matter is concerned. But like I'd like to kind of go back to what I was saying a few minutes ago in the program about, you know, not every social network is meant for every business. And I'd like to kind of explore that a little bit um, in depth with you. So if you would, you know, give us a little bit more uh, about what types of businesses would be most adept to using this type of social network. Exactly. And I, and I agree with that, too. Um but Pinterest is a little bit different. Uh, and I say not every business needs to use Pinterest to market their business, but that doesn't mean that every business can't use Pinterest in some way. Um, so if your intent is to attract customers and traffic back to your site and to promote your product or service, um, yeah, it is geared towards more towards specific types of things. If you are in a highly industrial type of business that you know makes a certain type of spring to go on a certain type of truck, you know, that Pinterest isn't necessarily going to do very much for you in that way. Um, 
but you could use it in other terms of you know marketing research and and design research and and other you can use it more as a research tool than a marketing tool. Um, and when it comes to other types of businesses, let's say you are a local business with you know products and services, or you're an online business, really what needs to happen is you need to have an online presence that has a regular stream of content. If you're not willing to or, or have the ability to have you know, a regular updated content on your site, whether that be in the form of blog posts or, or new products being added on a regular basis or something like that, um, you probably won't do very well on Pinterest either because only having three, you know, images of, you know, the latest widget that you've made and that's all you have on your site for a year, sharing those three pictures time after time after time again on Pinterest probably won't do too, too much for you. Um, if you're not really into... Um, creating content or having, you know, visual content, uh, you really might want to, you know, maybe think about another social network that would work better for you until or if you, you know, the day comes that you do want to create, you know, more of a regular stream of content. And that makes total common sense. I mean, the fact that, um, you know, someone's only going to put like three images, like you said, you know, if I show up on their Pinterest board um, and I see the same three images over and over again, I probably would get kind of turned off by it and I probably would never be interested or even check back. So I totally agree with you that you have to constantly keep feeding the, uh, the fire with more and more content to keep that flame burning and uh, keep uh, continually uh, the interest or stimulating the audience into giving, getting those eyeballs to pay attention to what it is that you are uh, trying to get across, you know, with your message. And ultimately, it's almost like uh, it's window shopping, you know, and you can showcase a lot of products in just one picture with a thousand words, you know? Yeah, Pinterest is the ultimate window shopping experience. It, it really is. Um, so if you have, let's say, a, a product and actually Harvard Business Review, you know, just that little publication that nobody's probably ever heard of. Oh, I've heard of um, it. Uh, I use it all the Harvard. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Harvard, Harvard Business Review did a, a study on uh, about Pinterest recently and, and how it really affects local businesses and, and what, you know, if people are really buying from Pinterest. And um, they found, I think it was one in five people that went to find something to buy on Pinterest ended up buying. And then one in three of those people or something like the exact statistics, but I'll get them to you, um, you know, were really shopping that they were under 35, but it really was driving that foot traffic into retail locations. And when it came to the images, they found that images of the product in use did really well. So the example they gave is if you had, they had, um, I think it was Crate and Barrel or Pottery, been Crate and Barrel, or maybe it was Pottery Barn, one of those two kind of home, home decor types of home decorating and, and supply stores or whatever, um, they had a measuring cup, but it was a flexible measuring cup. So if you just had it met the measuring cup sitting, you know, with, you know, in, in an image, okay, that's great. But they actually had somebody pinching the measuring cup as they were pouring some sort of like cake or cupcake batter out of it. So you could see that it was flexible. So that was different. That got that got people's attention. So sometimes having your products in use would be really, you know, a good approach to go. Um, if you do have a, a, a service that maybe does help people accomplish certain things, you know, maybe, um, I don't know, a real estate agent, I'm thinking. Um, if you have a, a real estate agent and they have sold, you know, so many houses in this, you know, amount of time and houses that have these features sell this percent faster, you know, some kind of statistics to represent in an infographic, that could really go a long way to market real estate services. Um, and infographics don't have to be complicated to um, to create. And, and it's funny we're talking about this because I just uh, recently wrote a guest post uh, for another blog about easily creating infographics. And a realtor created an infographic on a, on a service called PicMonkey, which is a free image editing type of service online. That's PicMonkey.com. And, you know, pretty simple. It had numbers, I think, one through six or seven and, you know, a background and some text and some color. Really simple that she was able to do. She's a real estate, real estate agent. She's not a, a, you know, a graphic designer or anything. And within like five days, it got 38 repins from my account. Wow. And I have nothing to do with real estate. So it wasn't even a targeted account. I just pinned it on a general infographics board or, or blogging board. Yeah. You know, so yeah, even amazing. though it, it, it doesn't need to be complex, you don't need to have, you know, you know, high statistics and, and really technical data to represent in, a, in an infographic, and they don't have to be complex to, 
to produce either. Um, I think really what does successfully or does really well and has success on Pinterest are the images that really solve people's problems meet their needs that are entertaining or visually appealing to them. There's another example that I just uh, I was actually on my podcast this week uh, of a gentleman who has a Pinterest account and he has a blog and he wrote a blog post about how to teach your child to t- tie their shoes in five minutes. Okay, it's, <laughs> it's pretty specific. But if you have a child getting ready to go off to school or some, you know, one that's learning how to tie their shoes, that's really helpful to you. It's really targeted and based on their needs. Um, and the image that he created for it kind of broke the, the traditional Pinterest rules, uh, which are, you know, you want your image to be tall rather than wide so it gets more real estate in the Pinterest feed. You want your image to have lots of color in it and be enticing and colorful. You want your image to not have faces in it. People don't want to see other people's faces faces. They want to kind of imagine themselves in that situation with that product, it seems like. Um, so the only time faces seem to work really well on Pinterest is if you, you know, have a hairstyle or, you know, makeup tips or things like that. In that sense, they work well. But if it's if it's more clothing or, or things like that, typically those off, you know, where you don't see the faces, the model of the, or the face of the model. The, so his picture, ha- you know, was wide. It wasn't tall. It ha- it was kind of a sepia tone, so kind of a black and whitish feel. Um, it had a little girl. You could see her whole face in it. You know, um, it kind of broke the rules, but that image over the last year has been pinned 380,000 times. That actually doesn't really surprise me because, um, you know, when I go and I, I use YouTube a lot, I've used it for years since almost the very beginning. And if I've seen some of the most simplistic videos like tying your shoe or cracking and peeling an egg from the eggshell become like, you know, the most uh, successful type videos that are put out there. And I guess the same kind of maybe applies to uh, Pinterest in exactly. simplifying a picture. So uh, keep that in mind, the listening audience, that uh, you don't have to be or think of the grand scheme or something very elaborate to get your message across or a, just a, basically to attract people one way or another. And maybe like in the shoe tying, you do something that's how to or relative that you can demonstrate through a picture. Uh, to what it is that you're trying to sell or a service or a product, either one, you know. So tell us a little bit about how Pinterest actually ties in the search. I'm sure a lot of people have questions about, you know, how that all comes around. Um, actually, it, it ties very closely into search. And I have a couple of examples that I like to share with this. Um, and one is of uh, a Two former teachers, they were elementary school teachers and decided to stay at home with their children and then they decided to start a blog about early childhood education. Um, They created a Pinterest account um, and it's called Reading Activities. And they made that a group board and they were involved in some other Facebook communities and and invited some people that they knew who had some success on Pinterest into this group board which kind of pulled their followers together on this board. Um, That board for reading activities ranks number one in Google for that search phrase. They outrank PBS and Scholastic. Um, So that board – you know, when you search reading activities on Google, you're going to come to their board first. That's going to be your top result. Um, so then you might, you know, as most people, oh, yeah, I'll click what's at the top and they go and find their Pinterest board and there is their website all over it. Um, another local type of um, example is construction guild. So it's a it's a guild. It's an association of builders and remodelers and construction industry type of, of businesses in Santa Cruz, California. They have a Pinterest account and one of their boards is Santa Cruz Remodeling. And if you use Google Santa Cruz Remodeling, which I'm sure a lot of people in Santa Cruz, California do, their Pinterest board comes up number one. Um, on that board they had um, at the that I found it, it and I was, you know, made aware of it, it had maybe a little over a hundred pins and a little over maybe like hundred and fourteen followers. Very low numbers. Um, so you could really use your Pinterest account to help you rank your, your overall business rank on Google. Well, that's really interesting in regards to search. You know, uh, I, I didn't really know that. That's uh, I'll have to check that out. So audience, you know, you might want to go and uh, do what Cynthia said. Go ahead and just go to Google and search so that you can see an example of what uh, she is uh, talking about and referencing. You know, my next question would be, I you know, obviously visited your site, uh, ohsopinteresting.com, and it looks like to me you just had uh, your first type of a, a webinar. And uh, I'd like for you to, if you'd like, is to tell the audience a little bit more about uh, what you provide, what you offer, and how you can help them 
uh, through your webinar and, and maybe, you know, when the next webinar will be scheduled. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, my workshop series just launched, um, and it's a three-week series where it's live interactive workshops. It's not kind of the, you know, you hear about webinars and, you know, you can show up or go and recordings and that kind of stuff. I really wanted this to kind of take place of those in live, in-person classes. Um, so they're really limited. They're small classes. Um, this session was 10 people. I might go up to 15, but I don't think I'll ever go higher than that because I want to give everybody the opportunity during these interactive sessions to make sure that their questions get answered and, you know, that everybody gets their needs met. We go, you know, really dive into Pinterest and how to do things. It isn't the overall statistics and the numbers and the philosophy behind it. It's how can you do this? Um, because, you know, for me, it's helpful when I've taken courses um, to, to have the step-by-step -step and the guide. Um, so that just launched and the next session will start up beginning of next year. So January 2014, we'll have the next one. Um, I also do one-on-one -on -one consulting and also, you know, in-person workshops and, you know, speaking engagements. Um, I just, after I left you in, um, in Maine, I came back home for a few days, then was off to New York and then to St. Louis to do, you know, in-person events. And then I'm off to Las Vegas in the beginning of January, New Media Expo. So... That's awesome. That's really cool that you had that such synergy going on, and it must be really exciting to be able to be asked as a guest to be at N M N M X. <laughs> this will be my third time there. The last three of three times I've had it, I've been at all three of them. This is my first time speaking. Well, good for you. You must be really excited. Yeah, it will be. It's it's, it's exciting. I, I've met and have learned so much at that conference, so highly recommend it. Yeah, I'll have to see if I could actually make it myself. Um, my schedule is kind of really busy. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing with my holiday, but uh, if I can definitely make it out there, I would love to be able to uh, meet up with you as well as so many other yeah, great yeah. individuals that will be out there attending that conference. You know, maybe we'll see you there. You also uh, publish a, um, a podcast, uh, ohsopinteresting.com um, podcast show, and it's syndicated uh, as well. Can you tell us, uh, the audience a little bit about uh, your podcast so they can find out some more information? Sure, sure. The podcast is available on my site at ohsopinteresting.com, and then you can also find it on iTunes, Stitcher, BlackBerry, and I think if Zoom still exists, it's there, it's there too. <laughs> yeah, it is if you obviously play uh, Xbox or PlayStation yeah. or something like that. <laughs> Well, everyone, we want to uh, show our appreciation for uh, Cynthia Sanchez for coming on the show here today. Yeah, thank you, Chad. I really appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. We are really happy to have somebody that can uh, cover uh, a new subject matter that we've never explored together here on this show. And if any of you who are listening uh, to this uh, podcast are interested, once again, I want to remind you to visit ohsopinteresting.com and check out all the wealth of information that Cynthia Sanchez has to share with everyone that is interested in uh, growing their social awareness on Pinterest. So uh, that's about it for this show here of Internet Marketing Pro this week. Next week, we have a special guest, and we're going to cover uh, reputation management. So we hope that you tune in. Uh, next week for that really interesting show, which is a new topic we haven't covered as well. So uh, have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Take care now. Bye-bye.